The history of this farm is actually pretty neat. They started developing a neighborhood around here in the 60s and 70s, and this was actually the last track of land that hadn't been developed. And so we bought it um, from a family that had owned it for about 120 years at that point. And their biggest concern was everything had been built into houses and they wanted to see, you know, some farmland maintained in this area. So I think that's actually one of the reasons that we ended up being able to buy it instead of a developer. We're currently looking at, you know, working with a nonprofit to actually get a conservation easement put on here where it'll always be farmland. Conservation to me is making sure that the land is going to be here for the next generation. When we think about land conservation, we're thinking about reducing tillage, which helps us reduce erosion, planting cover crops, building that soil and that organic matter. We also know that, you know, carbon is the ultimate driving system now. And then also really conservation of all our other resources. When we keep the soil intact, we don't flush nutrients into the water system. We keep our water clean and that's just better for every generation to come. My look at regenerative agriculture is I'm going to increase the value of this land, the production of this land, and try to make it where if my kids decide that they want to farm, it's going to be easier for them. They're not going to be as reliant on fertilizer. And so for me, I think that if we're increasing water cycles, mineralization of fertilizer and, and that nutrient cycle and that biology continues to go up, to me, that's regenerative ag. The tools that we use in regenerative agriculture, predominantly our planters, are they're all no-till. So we've actually built a fertilizer bar where we're injecting our phosphorus six to eight inches deep. It's safe, it's gonna stay down there. We're not gonna see that wash off into the rivers and streams. And it costs us about $5 an acre. And the benefit we see from that is, is actually bigger. And, and the conservation from that is, is 10 times what it would be if we were still farming the same way. You know, really looking at all the different principles of soil health and all the different ways that we can actually affect land has really been able to increase our resiliency when it comes to hard weather years. I was a career fireman for 12 years and my grandpa used to cut hay on about 10 acres. We had about five or 10 cows growing up. He had a meal job and kind of had ha cows as a hobby. That kind of piqued my interest. I think I just really like tractors and loud diesel engines. It was kind of amazing to me that you could plant a seed that would sprout and then that would grow food for people to consume. I would say four or five years old, that kind of piqued my interest and then saved up enough money while I was a career fireman and just kind of made the jump into farming full time back in 2015. So the crops that we grow predominantly are corn and soybeans. We've integrated livestock to the farm. We've had cattle, we've had pasture pigs. And the problem is, as we travel so much and try to help other farmers, it's hard for us to maintain livestock. We grow a lot of corn, whether that be yellow corn, whether it be Jimmy Red and Bloody Butcher, that's one of our red corn varieties. Then we've got Blue Hopi, we've got Blue Claridge. Um, we're growing some green oxon and corn. What we try to focus on in our grain production is where can we go value added? There's a group of farmers that we pulled our resources together and started Regen Mills, which is a mobile mill that we can grind grits, corn meal, we can grind flowers, we can do gluten-free like buckwheat, sorghum. Another avenue is the distilleries for us. So we supply City Walk, Foothills Distillery, and then we also have Old Nick Williams and Farm Reserve Distillery that we supply those three distilleries with grains that they can turn into bourbon, whiskey. They're actually making gin and vodka out of it now. And so trying to go after those, those higher end markets really has helped the bottom line of the farm. For me, I just want to make a living at farming that we make enough money that my family can live comfortably. I don't think we have to get rich at farming. I don't think any farmer gets rich at farming if they're doing it honestly. But for me, it's just to have a, the, the option for my kids to come back to the farm. If they don't want to farm, that's fine with me. This is my dream, this is my passion. If they don't want to farm, when I retire, we'll sell all the equipment. We'll probably lease the land to another farmer that wants to have farmland because we continue to lose farmland here to development. But I'll just cash out the equipment and maybe have some money to help my kids follow their dreams.